right. I was a little concerned about the uh, about the, the audio recording, so I was checking it out a little bit before class. I kept hearing this weird noise, and I'm like, what is that? But I realized there's a bucket here, and stuff is dripping in from somewhere. So, <laughs> so if you hear a plunking sound, that isn't a new kind of alert, you know, or anything, that, that's that. I, uh, I was not convinced that my coverage of PHP was very good, all right? Um, I, I think that it might not be really clear exactly the bit about redirecting your, your page uh, or redirecting the client to a different page depending on that and just the basics of PHP and so on. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take and build the example that I did last time but like build it a step at a time instead of showing you the finish. You know, we've seen the finish. You can download and look at the finished code. Um, but what I want to do is I want to build to that. All right, so we'll do it just a little. We'll do it incrementally. And so we can talk about each piece. And I'm hoping that that will be, uh, will be sufficient. So we're going on what we did last week uh, with the PHP code? With the PHP code, yeah. Well, yeah. Then there's include files. And there's a little uh, there's a little piece of code in there. Again, you've had PHP before, so maybe maybe it was a little more familiar. I'm, but I'm getting a sense that some of the other students in the it class. Not, you know, it's, it's been like three semesters since I took it, but just, just okay. seeing what the functionality is, it's, it seems pretty simple. Just plug in what you where you want to direct, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> For that piece of it, that's yeah. true. But then there's a whole bit of include files. And then inside the include files, even I have uh, a little bit of PHP code. So you know, hopefully we'll go through this. So we'll see. You know, we'll see how how uh, straightforward it seems. Uh, you know, again, you know, maybe you understand this well, but again, I'm just it, it's my sense that that uh, the class as a whole was having some issues with this. Um, and of course, part of our class as a whole disappeared right as the class started. So. That's a little, a little worrisome. Um, let me describe my development environment, and, and this will reinforce um, uh, the kind of stuff we were doing last week. I have a web server running on this machine, all right, this machine in here. So there's a web server running. Either they fixed it or whatever problem I was having last time isn't there anymore. So we're going to spend a few minutes and we're going to look at... Uh, a little bit about the web server setup, all right, and my development environment. Then I'll do a PHP piece. Then I'll move that PHP piece up to the actual server, and so that we can test it there. All right. So let's start out by looking at the web server. Yeah. This particular web server is Microsoft's IIS. So. IIS stands for Internet Something Services. I'm not sure what the other I stands for. Let's go and let's look at the web server because, again, the class's focus isn't this, but like the more you know about this stuff, the, the better off you are. So let's go and look at um, uh, the web server. So. Uh, under, let's see, under administrative tools, internet information services. All right, so I will go into that. And this is sort of the, the manager for our web server. All right. This one instead. There we go. This is the one that's actually installed and running. I'm not sure why they have two shortcuts here. Um, all right. This is our machine. All right. BU 205 AM 40 whatever. All right. If I click on that, I can actually um, manage several different websites uh, from this one machine, from this one web server. 
Any idea how you would manage multiple websites from one server? How would you handle that? Well, we put them in our folders, but how would you make it so that you would have two domains? Let's put it that way. www.mz1, www.mz2. Not have different folders within the server, but to have um, two actually totally different websites. The way you do that is you can change the port from the default. If we look at the properties of the default web server, We can look at uh, let's see. Some settings. All right. Concerning this. The protocols that are enabled the maximum bandwidth, timeout for connections, and so on. I'm not seeing all the things that I want to see. Edit permissions? No, not that one. Manage more so. There we go. Here's some of the things that I that I want. We can look at, at some of these um, over here. First thing that we have is we have the web server's default directory. All right. For example, you go to www.google.com or any URL. All right. It brings up a page. How does it know what page to bring up? Well, the web server has a default directory set up where it will start looking for pages in that folder. And in this particular case, the default directory is the system drive, which is drive C, C, INET, pub, www root. So if we look at, go just go through regular Windows Explorer, and go to C, INET, pub, www root, this is where my code lives. All right. I made a subfolder called lecture that we're going to we're going to be working in today. So to access this, this is in the web server's root directory in a subfolder called lecture. So how would I access this page? How would I what would I type in the browser to make this work? Well, What's the name of my web server? We're not, we don't have a domain registered, right? So it's not www.bu105 or whatever. It is localhost. The word localhost means the web server running on your own machine. So localhost slash will take me to the files in the web server's root folder. All right? But we don't want the web, uh, files in the web server's root folder. We want the files in the subfolder called lecture. So I'll type in the name of that subfolder. And then the name of the file that I want is called index.php. And that brings up this little PHP page that we'll look at in a second. Okay. So again, it's through the web server configuration that we specify where we're going to put these files. All right. The default website is going to be, the files for that is going to be in C, INET, pub, www root. All right. Let's see. Here's some other settings that we can configure for it. Um, we won't go, yeah. This specifies that it's looking for requests on port 80. That's what I wanted to find a while uh, ago. So if I wanted to have another website on this machine, I would um, create uh, and have, I would create a server that was listening for requests on another port. 
all right? Then make sure the port is open via the firewall and all that so that we could get through. The idea, though, is that we have to put, for our web server to work, we have to put our files in the folder that is expected, all right? And when you're, we're working in a development machine, if we're using Windows IIS, chances are the place where our files are required, uh, uh, the default folder is C, INET, pub, WW, root, and then we can make subfolders underneath that. All right? So, that's a little tour of the web server. There's a lot of other things that you can do with it and define permissions and set up PHP and that sort of thing. But let's look at, at PHP. All right? Let's look at the PHP code that I have so far. And again, it's in C, INET, pub, WW, root, lecture. If I open this guy up in Notepad Plus, we'll see our PHP page. And this is not the full page from last time. All right, this is a scaled down version. I wanted to show you, again, a couple things. Remember, PHP is a mix of plain old HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, in other words, the stuff that are, uh, is there in static web pages, mixed with PHP code. The standard stuff that we've been doing all along gets sent to the browser as is. So, for example, I have this HTML here. Oops. That block of HTML, that's not PHP code. It's not in the PHP tag. Therefore, it gets sent to the browser as is, all right, without any processing. Remember, though, the purpose of PHP pages is that they're dynamic, which means that when the code processes, all right, the web server outputs some HTML, and portions of that page can be dynamic. That is, portions of that page can be generated uh, by the web server, as opposed to being hard coded in uh, in in the uh, in the HTML. So in this case, the stuff that's PHP is this here and this here. All right. I have two blocks of code that are. HTML. Oh, I'm sorry, that are PHP. They're not HTML. And I'm going to go and I'm going to change that to do that. So I'll change it a little bit. All right. Let's look at this code and see what it does. First thing it does is it uses this. This is something that's built into PHP. This is a, a system variable, and it relates to information about the requests that came in. Remember, if you request a web page from a server, all right, you supply a bunch of stuff. You supply the URL that you want. You might supply some form data. All right, you may supply some values on the query string. But one of the things that you supply is some information about, and by you, I mean the client. One uh, piece of information that the client supplies is the user agent. In other words, what sort of browser the person is using. So this server, square bracket, HTTP user agent, is pulling the user agent out of the request. All right? It's pulling that out of the request and it's storing it in a variable called user agent. Now, I made up that variable. I could have called that x or whatever. All right? I made up the variable user agent. I did not uh, make this up. That's a built-in feature of PHP. That's just how you um, pull the user agent. Now, how do I know this is PHP? It's PHP because it's included within the PHP directives. So the web server knows that this between here and here is not HTML, is PHP. Now, what gets sent to the browser for this? 
What gets sent to the browser for these lines of, of code, one through seven? C, 
INET pub WW root, and then I put it in a subfolder from there called lecture. All right. So my index PHP is in C INET pub WW root. All right. And then it's in a folder called lecture. So to access from the web server, I have to type in localhost to start. Localhost says it's on my web server. It's not on Google site or Learning Community site or, or eBay or whatever. It's on this machine. If it were in the web server's root folder, that is, if it was in CINET pub WW root, I would just type in the name here. But it's not. It's in a subfolder called lecture. Therefore, I type in slash lecture slash index.php. So now when I press return, there I see um, the HTML that got generated. Now, let's take a closer look. I'm going to ask a question here. Here's two different views of this page. They both say CI, they, they both say index.php. Yet one is different than the other. Alright. This one is different than this one. What is the difference between these two views of the page? Why do the pages look different? There's no media. There's no media query in this at all. Okay. Well, that one has PHP. That one doesn't. Right. Okay. So one of them has PHP tags. The other one doesn't. All right. Good observation. Why does the one have PHP and the other one doesn't? Remember how I viewed these two. All right. Let's let's like they say nothing up my sleeves. Let's start back at the beginning. All right. Here. Here's my page out on disk. I'm going to go and say edit it in notepad. Alright, there it is. I'm going to now, I went to that page, localhost slash lecture slash index.php, and I'm going to right mouse and say view source. So now, here is the page within the browser. Why are they different? I guess. It has already gone through the PHP server? Exactly. This is the PHP page. This is the instructions. This is how it looks sitting out there on the server before it gets processed. If you will, this is like the recipe for the web page, the instructions for the web page. I got a little bit of PHP. I got some HTML. I got a little bit of PHP. All right. So this is how the file looks living on the server. This is the HTML that got generated from that PHP code. Okay? Because remember, a browser can't view PHP code as it is. The server has to process the PHP code and do its thing to it, and then the output of the server is HTML. Now, parts of the, this look the same. All right? For example, Line 8 through 16 here looks exactly like lines 1 through 9 here. Why is that? Well, that was plain old HTML in the PHP file. So there's no translation needed. It simply gets sent to the client. Now, lines 1 through 7 aren't anywhere in the HTML file. Why? Well, because that's PHP code. The server executed it, and because we didn't do any sort of echo or anything, all right, nothing got sent to the browser. Now, the key thing is probably line 17, if we were to look at it. 
Line 17 in the PHP document says PHP echo user agent. If we look in the HTML document, this is what we see. Well, what is that? That is the user agent variable that we had on the server because I said echo user agent that got sent to the browser. All right. So it's important to, to know and, and, and to really realize what's going on here. On the server, we're going to have a PHP document that's going to be a mix of PHP and HTML. That gets processed by the web server that is running PHP. All right. The output then that gets sent to the browser is going to be an HTML document. There's not going to be any PHP code in it. The, the, the server processes that and produces the HTML. But because of this HTML, uh, because part of the HTML is generated through PHP, we can make our content dynamic. All right? We'll see an example of that in a second. So when someone is using view source on essentially a PHP website, they're really just seeing a moment in time they're seeing the, the HTML that got generated by that PHP. Because Correct. if you asked something different of the page, in other words, different conditions, you mm -hmm. see different right. generated HTML. Right. It's like, now I don't know what language they use uh, for Google, but if we are to Google, PHP, do a view source, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see a bunch of stuff, but somewhere down the line, we're going to see the links to those PHP pages. might not be the best example. Let's do an Amazon. Let's go to Amazon and let's search for the Beatles. All right, if we look at this page, and do a view source. There you go. Maybe. We'll see things related to the Abbey Road record. Absolutely right. If you did a view source um, on a page generated by PHP, you're seeing the HTML that the page generated. You're not seeing the PHP code. Okay. Uh, to see the PHP code, you'd have to be on the server. Now, we're in the unique situation of we're working on a development server. We're working on this machine here. That is both our server and our client. So we can view it both ways. But typically, a user viewing it is going to see the HTML. All right. So let's go and let's say we're happy that this works. All right. And I'm going to go and I'm going to move it onto the web server, the real web server. All right. Not my development web server, but the web server for this class, CISS 268. And how did I connect to it? 
Well, I just opened up Windows Explorer.